in Vancouver, evening in North America. And I wish also good morning for those who are listening to us all the way to Hong Kong and Australia. Thank you for coming to the fourth uh, lecture seminar from Branko Gems Advanced Academy. Talking about diamonds, talking about provenance and grading of pink diamonds, Argal and non Argal origin from four continents. I started my geological career in New York, 1995, and I was lucky to uh, work a uh, few years in uh, GA first, another lab in New York, and learn about coal diamonds from the source, from the dealers, and do my own research. And uh, later on, I moved to Canada, and uh, last 11 years, I'm uh, head of the Canadian Geological Laboratory. Uh, we do coral diamonds, of course, uh, beside coralless and other gemstones and a lot of education on four continents, seven, 17 countries. In the last six years, I'm cooperating with the GRS, the German Research Swiss Lab, on this project of provenance source of pink diamonds, how to separate Argyle from non-Argyle. GRS specializing in country of origin, Dr. Peretti as a leader, and we have a, a research centers. I was very often in Hong Kong, Bangkok, and, ba and uh, so not Basel, but Lutzer, and uh, now Vancouver. So let's uh, show you the outline of the lecture. So approximately 40 minutes uh, covering characteristic of pink diamonds from four continents, eight countries, focusing on Argyle diamonds and other uh, sources, talking about how to screen them with the simple instruments, because it's advanced uh, academy, but it's first color diamond lecture. So I will start simple to intermediate level, and we have more on pink diamonds and uh, detection in uh, lectures in May and June. I'll talk about fluorescence of argon and non-argon diamonds, uh, visible infrared and photoluminescence spectroscopy, and how we can ID pink treated and static diamonds on the market. I will show you a short video, a few minutes, and this is a chance for you to ask questions during my lecture at Q&A box. And uh, I will continue with the color grading of pink diamonds, what is very uh, challenging and very interesting, and introduce our CGL GRS uh, new fancy plus grading system, a little bit different than uh, GA system. And we'll touch on the value. It's not about value today. I'm not appraiser, but we do appraise uh, color diamonds in uh, CGL laboratory. We'll have pinks regularly from Canadian and uh, uh, American uh, sources. At the end, we'll have a questions and I will update you for the upcoming uh, webinars and seminars. This is a range of colors uh, we had a chance to see during the study and in regular work the last 25 years in three labs. Could be very intense, almost red in the middle to more brown, top right to, to purple, bottom right, or just orangey pink or purple pink. So uh, this is historical order of sources of pink diamonds. Uh, First two, uh, no chance to investigate and go and study because they're very old sources and they're finished in 15th, 16th century, 17 maybe. Uh, from 18 to until now, Brazil is a very important source. We had the stones from Brazil, Africa, South Africa, and uh, mid Africa, Angola, and other bordering countries uh, from 19th century, end of 19th century to now. Venezuela, also source of pink diamonds, uh, last maybe 100 years. We also have a, a, some historical sources from Tanzania. We study Congo and uh, Russia as a major source beside Australia becoming now more and more important, uh, Siberia and Arkhangelsk. And of course, Argel 90% uh, used to be a source of pink diamonds finished last November. We have also pink diamonds in Canada and other uh, countries around the world like Lesotho uh, in Africa. So Indonesia, was very interesting uh, source. Um, this is some pictures from a colleague from uh, Las Vegas. They're mostly brown and yellowish diamonds, but sometimes they have, it could be pinkish or pink diamonds. It's alluvial and uh, still has them um, occasionally, people still mine diamonds there. Much important source and uh, historically very, very important, uh, Golconda in India. You can see here some of the most expensive and uh, largest stones like Darya Noor from Ocean of Light, 186 carats on the left in the Crown Jewelers collection in Iran, and one sold at Christie's more than a million dollars per carat, 3465 Princey from Indian royal family. This is some other pinks uh, uh, from museums uh, in uh, Tehran, uh, Nurlian, or Agra 2815, 
uh, fancy light pink to some stones that are part of French uh, crown jewelers like uh, Hortensia and Conde. Brazil, it's important source uh, because sometimes they could be also so intense and so deep, they are called fancy red, like one in the middle. Uh, during my time in New York, I had a chance to uh, look at the stone uh, for a short time. Uh, it was 10 karat rough. And this is the stone uh, 95 Hancock Red, the first stone to break $1 million per carat uh, at auction in Christie's 1987. Since that, uh, Crow Down become more, uh, especially pink, uh, interesting for the trade, especially Argyle was in the production, a lot of melee diamonds, people, designers could use it to, for jewelry and become price was uh, rising since then. This is one more purple uh, pink diamond from a jewelry's Dan Hoover, who spent the most of his life uh, studying uh, large diamonds, specifically pinks from Brazil. And Brazil is a source of some biggest uh, diamonds after Africa, of course, uh, South Africa, like 726 uh, Vargas diamond was colorless, but some of them are quite big. Uh, you can see here quite big rough uh, diamonds. And this is the river, uh, very small river, uh, Abaete, uh, I was there in 2000 uh, visiting uh, other uh, sources of uh, diamonds. I was in this river, uh, Parneba, but this is the river where a small boy uh, found a 10 carat uh, red uh, crystal brought to the jeweler and ended up to be five carat Mosef red uh, sold at uh, $20 million uh, a few years after. Uh, in order to study pink diamonds, it's not enough to have instruments. It's very important to collect uh, pink diamonds from original sources. And this is where GRS was very, very important uh, because they invested the money in buying these uh, samples. And I was there studying with uh, mostly Matthias Alessandri and Dr. Peretti. And this is some stones uh, we bought uh, or borrow from dealer uh, Francis Herrera uh, from Hong Kong were very, very helpful in borrowing our stones. This is stones uh, that did not fluoresce and uh, many of them are type 2A or 1AB, we call it low nitrogen diamonds. This is me, uh, younger, uh, almost 20 years ago in Brazil. Uh, some stones uh, comes only to auction and to really uh, difficult to study them, but uh, this is a head, head gemologist from GRS Switzerland, uh, Willy Berry, uh, visiting uh, Sotheby's auction in 2013, where uh, 59.60 pink star was there. Uh, and uh, he just quickly check with the loop and check fluorescence. What for me interesting was that uh, this stone, obviously he has a medium fluorescence, was graded weak or known by other two major labs. So this is a not consistency in uh, observing. It was sold eventually after New York dealer uh, defaulted to $73 million for the Cho Toy Fok uh, jeweler in uh, Hong Kong. Sometimes uh, we have to work with universities. I have a very good relation with the University of British Columbia. Uh, Dr. Michael Polova, head of the uh, diamond department, uh, we do a lot of catadolmanescence and uh, chemistry uh, study there with, or gems and diamonds. And uh, this is a collection uh, she used for a PhD study from Charles Kosman, and I was, uh, be able, I was able to borrow it and study with advanced instruments uh, there from Congo and there uh, very nice uh, uh, local uh, diamonds on the border to Angolian border. Uh, Russia is very important source. Uh, this is a stones you, you see now there from Siberia. Uh, they, they have this more purple uh, tint uh, or sometimes they're more purple than pink. This is uh, one on the right is definitely more purple. They have very characteristic uh, surface uh, uh, graining, uh, the rich the surface internal graining. And uh, we study over honey stones uh, they're similar uh, in some way to Canadian geologically, and they, they do not fluoresce the type 1A, it means having nitrogen uh, primary as an impurity and quite a high amount of nitrogen. And uh, we also uh, study some stones, sometimes you get caught at the shows. Uh, 2018, uh, I was a Hong Kong show uh, with, uh, of course, GRS was exhibiting, and uh, John Shepherd was there, a colleague from. Uh, Australia, and we went to a special uh, by invitation only viewing of Alrosa collection of color diamonds. Uh, this collection was including uh, all color diamonds, but uh, at least uh, 20 of them were pink. And one was very uh, fascinating. This is 1104 deep purple pink by GAA. 
uh, I don't know if they sold it, but it was estimated at 37 million uh, dollars. Uh, to me, when I reviewed the stone, I saw a lot of brown around the stone. You can see it in the picture. Sometimes this brown is hidden under terminology deep. Just be careful with that. Uh, and uh, it's called Spirit of the Rose uh, by uh, uh, after ballet uh, from 1911. Uh, one of the most expensive uh, gems in Russia. And uh, these stones, uh, as I mentioned, are similar to Canadian. And this is stones I studied from Canada. Uh, I borrow almost 10 carat of uh, rough uh, from company from uh, Corona Jewelry from uh, John Phillips. And also we, we, we got some stones, we bought some stones. They do not fluoresce. They also has a pink to purple tint, more purple. And I published article about this. Uh, in AGTA magazine, Prism 2016. They're not very intense. They're mostly uh, faint, light pink, uh, like a brownish tint. And this is the biggest one I ever study from local jeweler uh, and cutter here from Victor Mine that is closed a couple of years ago. It was a, a 1275 carat, uh, just uh, almost to maybe pink, but it still was light pink from Canada. And of course, uh, to, uh, 2014, I had a chance uh, uh, to visit uh, again, second time. I was first time in 2000 in uh, um, Rio Tinto, then I went to the mine, first time in 2014. Me and Dr. Peretti from GRS uh, organized the trip by John Chapman, we went to see the rocks. It was open mine, still uh, uh, there, but just turning to be underground, actually, 2013 was the last day of open mine. 2014 was still uh, becoming to be underground. And seven years after they just closed it. Uh, majority of the stones from this mine are brown or brownish. You can see a picture here. It, I was amazed uh, how many diamonds actually uh, they collected one day, but it's a huge operation, one of the largest mine in the world uh, ever, uh, more than 10 kilograms of diamonds uh, in one day. And you can see most of them are brown, and sometimes it's a nice, uh, really uh, octahedron here, pink or purple to be cut. The biggest one was a recover 4260. Unfortunately, we broke its museum in Melbourne, all different shapes. And uh, you can see here how it looks uh, when it's rough and when it's polished, in this case, fancy shapes, more brown than, than pink on the top or brownish pink on the bottom. Still uh, expensive stone. Once it become more pink, more purple, uh, it's skyrocketing price, of course, because they're more rare. And you can see here uh, they, cut, they cut around, uh, usually around. Uh, um, has more premium than fancy shapes. Uh, and these are quite intense, uh, especially on the bottom. Uh, I had a chance to go underground uh, 2014 and uh, see operation. It was really amazing uh, how they're doing uh, this. Um, unfortunately, it's closed now. And uh, I think uh, market for this is still strong and will continue to rise, especially that there's no more uh, mining. So 2007 and eight. Uh, well, I already was in, in Canada uh, with international team, uh, including uh, people from New York, Dushan Simic, uh, who is a uh, co-author of our latest book on laboratory grown diamonds. We did a lot of research projects together, uh, not only on, on static diamonds, but also on color diamonds, uh, treaty diamonds. This is the one we studied from Rio Tinto. We got a, a research grant uh, to compare these pinks from natural to treated and synthetic. We use opportunity to really study Argyle very, very well in depth. Uh, most of them has a special pink uh, graining that correspond to the body color and has special kind of inclusions, uh, something called them bubbles, but they're not really bubbles, they're liquid inclusions. And this is a, a photo with a very simple instrument, peel inspector, but is really a UV lamp portable. It has opening for the photography and uh, system to save the picture. Uh, but Gemetrix, you can see this is typical fluorescence, a medium to strong blue under long UV light and weak to medium under short UV light. It's a good screen technique because if it's completely non fluorescence, uh, I would not consider further testing for Argyle, though some is first screening test. And uh, 2014, 16, and many years after, almost every year, I was in Australia doing workshops. This is a group from Perth. Uh, uh, some of you maybe recognize yourself. And uh, this is uh, people who were uh, developing Argyle system. Uh, Grading uh, color, a different system than GAA. And uh, Sir Edwards actually uh, was uh, appraiser from Perth, was taking this picture of this beautiful uh, tiara 
over two million dollars at that time, second day of the workshop, we had a chance to, to put on the UV light, light and make the picture. And this is how it looks. Uh, all stones are pink, the forest blue. This is one of the first screening techniques. Of course, we want to uh, end up there. We would do always spectroscopy. And this is uh, how it looks uh, under uh, infrared spectroscopy. Uh, Argal uh, diamonds have specific uh, uh, fingerprint in infrared spectra. And this is a uh, aggregation of A. It's smaller. This is two nitrogen atoms. And B aggregation is higher. It's a four nitrogen atoms. And this is typical uh, fingerprint of Argal, usually low to medium amount of nitrogen, very different than this on the top. That is uh, not Argal diamond from other source, probably Russia, or could be other sources. Uh, of course, uh, to do final identification of the source, we don't uh, rely on standard instruments. We go to more to advanced instruments, and this is the one system that uh, has uh, two, four different channels, uh, sources for visible uh, light and special uh, container. We can cool down the diamonds to liquid nitrogen temperature, what is uh, almost uh, uh, 200 degrees Celsius minus. This is two lasers, 405 and 532, that we will uh, look at the diamonds and for this fine, fine internal structure uh, to see these defects and separate this. So this combination of uh, different instruments, of course, not only spectroscopy, it's fluorescence plus spectroscopy, and sometimes even it's necessary to use uh, other techniques. This is how it looks, uh, uh, infrared and visible spectra of one of the Argyle diamond uh, and many other pinks could have similar visible spectra uh, that has uh, absorption around 385, what is violet, and band we call 550 nanometer pink band, and transmission in a blue part and red part of the spectra. And this is where why the light goes through the stone. Uh, as a result, we see a combination of, of uh, pink and purple, or mostly purple pink diamonds could be more pink, more purple, depends on the uh, internal uh, combination and, uh, and the light. And this is uh, what we uh, did as a summary in a magazine uh, ICA Gazette, World of Pink Diamonds and Identification, together with Dr. Peretti, uh, Matthias Alessandri, Alessandri, sorry, uh, spring 2015. It's possible to read few, full article at GEM Conference website under uh, archive, uh, the first conference in Greece. And we separate this in three groups. Uh, first group is Argel, as uh, he has very specific inclusions, uh, we, we think but very uh, characteristic uh, multi-color uh, uh, pattern on the cross polarized filters, usually medium to strong blue and weak medium fluorescence on the short UV light. It's similar, but not the same as the group from Angola, Brazil, Canada, Congo, Russia, Venezuela. It also type 1A, could have similar inclusions, but usually they don't fluoresce, sometimes it could be overlap with fluorescence, that's why we need advanced spectroscopy. And this group uh, is mostly type 2A, or we can call 1AB, low nitrogen diamonds from South Africa, Tanzania, Brazil, India, Lesotho. They usually do not fluoresce, could be weak blue. And uh, what is different is the Golconda diamonds do have some weak uh, to medium orange fluorescence uh, due to enemy centers. So the question is, uh, of course, for gemologists uh, always, is pink color natural or not? And where is, uh, what's the origin? Very important question. And uh, pink and red being the most expensive colors of all, you can imagine that the most treatments are done exactly on pink uh, or red color. And this is just combination of options. Could be natural color, could be coated, very important. Uh, spectroscopy does not help too much, it's mostly uh, microscopy. Fracture field, I've seen a diamond that's so much fractured and so much flashes of purple that this purple influenced the color of the diamond. Could be just irradiated and heated, could be multi-step treated, could be synthetic uh, treated, HPC grown or CVD grown. And this is from Nice Diamond New York a picture. And just to remind you, uh, never uh, disregard coating and always check under loop or microscope diamond. Don't just put under spectro spectroscope or spectrometer. You can be surprised. This is coated uh, purple diamonds. On the bottom, here, multi-step treated. Uh, first person who did this treatment was Victor Vince uh from siberia he'll be a uh, speaker in, in on may 7 
And Dushan covered this a little bit in his last lecture on HPHT treatments, because one of the process to, to create this color was to first put in a press to modify the internal uh, composition by creating single nitrogen and then apply uh, irradiation and heat to make this pink or purple color. This is evidence of HPHT treatment visually. Of course, we can, we can do it with spectroscopy. And very important uh, to use uh, after magnification, uh, cross polarized filters. Uh, I use a portable polariscope, could be also set up uh, two filters on the microscope. This is a, a diamond that is, uh, has some uh, pattern, definitely natural diamond, not very strong. Uh, and by infrared spectroscopy, we prove this is a 1AB uh, uh, diamond with capital B, four nitrogen atoms surrounding a vacancy. That was post treated, but this is cannot be done by this technique. We need to do spectroscopy or fluorescence. And this is a, a picture, uh, another picture from Dushan Simic on the left from a book on uh, cross polarized filters. We also uh, put this in our latest book on laboratory ground diamonds, actually, uh, five, six pictures just on cross polarized filters. This is one by Matthias Alessandri uh, because together uh, we study uh, CVD diamonds from company Orion PDC in Hong Kong and published article. Uh, you can uh, see it online in GRS website or contribution to gemology. This is indication that the CVD, this is indication that it is not natural diamond. This is a, a very small a pink HPHT grown. Of course, we study many other, uh, we bought a lot of uh, samples uh, uh, from Hong Kong, from Sai Diamond, from Chatham, Russians, AOTC. This one, the first stones, uh, uh, it was fancy red, uh, certified New York, uh, and I, I'm one of the first pe person who certified these diamonds with the color grading because uh, it's important if it's a red or pink or brown or brownish purple, even synthetic or treated diamond, because color is crucial uh, as a price factor to determine the value. Of course, uh, sometimes uh, they could have a carbon uh, inclusion. We call it amorphous carbon. Why? Because it did not crystallize. This is in one plane. It's a strong indication. It's a CVD a diamond. It is. Sometimes very unusual inclusion. So this is a regular feathers color that we don't know the cause. Uh, this is pink diamonds that are synthetic. So always start basic, always start. Uh, uh, this is some kit uh, uh, developed by myself, uh, John Chapman and a colleague in Hong Kong, uh, just to start your investigation with the loop uh, uh, and fluorescence. We also make very simple booklet on red, pink and purple gemstones, including diamonds, pink diamonds. Uh, that you can be with fluorescence and cross polar filters find out not 100% is never 100% it's a simple instrument but at least 90 95% you can screen these diamonds and you can find out more about these instruments and books at the brancogems.com uh, website in case you want to order the booklet this is a fluorescence uh, booklet on the right this is a, a photo from Dushan Simic uh, almost 15 years ago that we uh, put in an article in diamond related materials how to screen mele pink diamonds. Very important because a lot of pink diamonds are Margala mele. If you see uh, medium to blue fluorescence and the long UV light, this is 365, you're dealing most probably with natural diamond, but be careful, could be also still coated. This is one color when it's just irradiated and heated. When it's a multi-step uh, treated, it become more mixture, uh, we can call it peach color. On the right, you can see here how it looks very kind of chalky, uh, pink orange mixture of some blue coming through. It's a multi-step treated. And when it's just synthetic treated, it's more orange. You can see here picture is we confirmed that in a book on 2018. This is a CVD and this is HPHT treated one, similar fluorescence. And this is, a, of course, we uh, bought also samples from Argyle compared to synthetic, uh, very important to separate them quickly. And fluorescence is good technique because Argyle fluoresce uh, long UV, medium to strong blue. And this is orange or red. Orange or red could be two things. Could be synthetic, but also could be natural treated. Be careful. Uh, so that's why I'll show you in a few seconds one short video uh, how to use uh, EXA, what is an uh, advanced spectrometer uh, by Magi Labs, how to separate natural uh, treated and uh, lab grown in a few minutes. This is a spectra visible of the natural diamond that I mentioned before. And when it's treated, Usually there's not so much of the entry center, could be, but this is probably brown diamonds, but developing of envy center, 6637, you can see it here, even with the handheld spectroscope. So if you just, uh, uh, I hear some questions coming, so this is great. 
please uh, ask questions now during this break and listen uh, and watch the video that uh, will show you use of uh, photoluminescence, very simple uh, portal. After using simple portable spectroscope, it is useful for many gems, but not so precise for diamonds, because we need to look over the more details. It's under $100 instrument, but if you invest uh, eight, eight and a half thousand dollars instrument and get something like EXA or J screen made by Magi Labs, we can do more in details. I have three stones, number one, three, and four. What is nice, we can also use this uh, strong uh, PL laser that is really uh, correspond to long UV uh, light in a jewelry inspector, pill inspector. We can see it's quite strong blue fluorescence. In spastic natural diamond, even in this instrument is not designed for color diamonds, it's designed for colorless diamonds for screening natural synthetic. Uh, spectra is very typical for natural diamonds with the blue fluorescence. In this case, it's Argyle diamond, but some other places could have similar spectra. We see peaks from 400 to 500, what is called Cape lines. 415 is the strongest, 478. And this is a very good way to confirm natural origin and natural color. Second stone is also pink. It's more intense, darker purple pink and under long UV light is mixture of fluorescence between orange and blue what is typical for multi-step treated stones is passing the natural diamond what is good it is natural because on the left side we can see peaks that correspond to natural diamonds and uh, probably was brownish or yellowish uh, original color that is post treated all these peaks on the right um, around 575 what is NV center, nitrogen vacancy center to 637 and other NV centers uh, are due to irradiation and post-treatment. And we can uh, uh, kind of find these uh, peaks uh, with, with the cursor and study them more. And uh, this is a final way to tell this is a stone is treated. The value is much less the natural color, of course, but it's still natural diamond. The last stone is mounted in a ring. It's it's pink diamond that has very strong orange fluorescence under long UV uh, laser or 365. What is nice is also referring uh, to further testing that is not natural by first level screening. On a second level, you can see the real spectra. It's not really always 100% confirming synthetic, but it's confirming in this case that stone is post-treated and looks very similar to that treated natural diamond because it has this, again, 575 lines and 637 corresponding to irradiation and heat treatment. We will confirm the synthetic origin with the other instruments like the cross polaris filters and spectroscopy. Have a question or two so you're welcome to ask now or we can ask also at the end it's up to you so this is now origin question uh anonymous uh, branco pr try to tell us which mine origin for pinks are definitely identifiable and which one the most probably are not in the identifiable uh interesting question um okay so we definitely can uh, put argyle type uh, of of the diamond and uh, telling this is coming from argyle uh, uh, this is uh, identifiable uh, uh, for me now uh, to separate now if it's uh, from russia or canada it's more tricky or there's no interest for that yet unless some big mining company decides to 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 market siberian diamonds uh, or Canadian diamonds, but for now it's uh, not, not enough uh, Canadian pinks. Uh, Brazilian stones, uh, I can say they're, they're mostly type 2A, but again, uh, they could be type 2A from, from Africa, South Africa. So, uh, so I cannot go by country by country. It's very difficult. Uh, what we uh, did is uh, to identify Argyle signature, Argyle type, and uh, issue report on that. Uh, we can definitely do that. Why? And trade doesn't want us to separate each country. Nobody asked me so far. 
uh, I mean, internally they can ask me, oh, what do you think, uh, where is from? I said, I think most probably Russia, but I would never put on the report. Uh, this is what we're doing right now. Uh, yes, so some of you are putting things in chat, uh, what is okay, but uh, I prefer if you can ask questions, uh, not in chat, uh, but in uh, Q and A uh, anyway, it's fine. So what I'll do, I'll continue the presentation at the end, when I, uh, when I uh, towards the second block of questions, I will show you uh, that video directly uh, from, uh, from my computer. So is it possible to improve already existing light color by any process? Improve, yes. Yes, uh, definitely it's possible. Uh, one simplest way to do it is to add another coating a layer and uh, make from uh, faint pink or very light pink um, fancy or fancy tense. That's why it's very uh, dangerous to look at the uh, diamonds, only one technique. And this is what uh, me and Dushan are uh, telling in our book all the time. Always compare the two, three, three the best instruments, especially uh, color diamonds, because uh, spe spectroscopically could look the same, light pink or fancy tense pink, but color wise is a big difference. And uh, uh, to do radiation kneeling to add color, of course, it's possible, but it's more unpredictable result. I mean, we can see more on, on this uh, May 7 lecture. I would strongly encourage you to come for this lecture because people who are doing this process will tell you more uh, about this. I, I was observing uh, mostly HPC process and growing diamonds and uh, uh, not so much radiation, but I think it's uh, not so easy to dial the color and say, I want fancy, intense, fancy with pink only. It depends on the original uh, starting material. Um, if it's more nitrogen or less nitrogen, what we know to make nicer pinker color, to make more natural looking color, you need to start with a lighter, uh, less amount of nitrogen, and then you can you can definitely achieve that with the multi-step process. So this is good. Just when I was still in New York, it's by Stephen Hoffer on color diamonds. Very informative book. Uh, a lot of uh, uh, nice pictures and explanation. If you study Aurora collection, uh, I've seen it in New York and, and second time also in, in London and British Museum. Uh, so he's a, he a different system than GAA. And even at that time we tried to work, uh, but didn't work out, not because of me and him, because of the politics to, to create some other system. But he likes to use uh, uh, more common terms like rosé, salmon, rouge, bubblegum, strawberry. And believe it or not, between dealers, they does use for this kind of color bubble gum uh, such a nice vivid uh, purple pink they call it bubble gum of course when it comes to uh, auctions like attenders of uh, uh, argyle diamonds that goes uh, every year around the major city tokyo hong kong sydney new york geneva and maybe now others that, that was uh, almost 20 years ago you need to have a certificate of origin and uh, ga is the major one 20 years ago was also HRD. For me, this interesting slide because it's showing how the same stone could get different grading from GA fancy deep pink, I1, HRD fancy intense brownish pink. So that brownish is uh, hidden here under deep and it is definitely expensive stone because over carat, argyle. This is also uh, expensive stone because it's almost two carats, 166, vivid. GA started with vivid uh, uh, maybe 15, 20 years ago, not, uh, not 20 years ago for sure. Uh, and the HRD uh, didn't use it for a long time. So it's different uh, way how different labs grading diamonds. Uh, this is my point on, of this slide. And uh, I was trained, uh, I was working in GA a couple of years before moving to other labs. And I was trained to use a, a Mansell book of color, like one on the right. Or right. And uh, in this case, each color has saturation, strength, a tone, lightness or darkness and hue, what is the attribute of the color. So we're basically looking for this specific volume, specific chip in 3D uh, space. This is a, a light to dark, light to dark. This is a, uh, intensity. And this is a, uh, what type of color? Uh, there are many different colors, like rainbow colors. So uh, we're looking to compare with this. What's the problem with this? This, this is a, a not real diamonds. And sometimes we cannot have all masters. Of course, masters is the best. Uh, but it's not possible. Uh, this is, uh, with these two slides, a part of the presentation that uh, Tom Gelb, uh, who used to work with me in GA and still 
stayed to work for 20 years as a major color diamond uh, grader. He did a nice lecture, uh, the conference we did in Italy, only on color diamonds, whole conference, at least half conference, I have workshops. I think uh, I never, I've never had, I will never say never, but thanks to Francis Herrera from Hong Kong, who borrowed me a really beautiful collection of color diamonds. We had one day color diamond workshop on identification and grading. We use Mansell grades, we use the masters. This is how we would grade uh, color diamonds using Mansell chips. We'll choose the closest one we think, first chip, and put face up, not, not like uh, colorless diamonds D to Z range, we do table down, table up. And then maybe look one, one lighter in color, mm, it's too light, one darker, it's too dark, but we're not happy with the result. We go again to another page, and this is just to show you how it looks. This is a different pages from my cell book of colors. And this book itself is over thousand dollars. <laughs> but uh, what's the problem with this? Problem is that, uh, for example, this is definitely more light here or very light, they become to be fancy. Problem with the fancy is the range. You know, you have a one, two, three layers intense. Intense is also a range. You have six chips and deep uh, pink comes here is a few different chips cover one color. So it's not, it's not easy to do this. You need to have a lot of experience and good eye. And sometimes it's just a compromise is a borderline call until you find the right chip in the right color space to say this is fancy intense or fancy orangey pink, for example. And this is a problem. And this is why I, I choose some just to show you this uh, issue. This both stones are great by GA report as a uh, fancy pink. This is definitely lighter stone. This is more intense. You can see matching this uh, color chip. On the right, this stone even has brownish tint, uh, great fancy intense pink. This is uh, definitely a nice intense pink on the right. Uh, this is maybe round, has different uh, uh, color distribution, but this is a big difference in price between uh, such a stones. Uh, and dealers know this, and uh, they correspond this like a, a weak, fancy, or strong, fancy, or some uh, their own terminology. That's why uh, four or five years ago, uh, I sit down with the uh, GRS uh, gemologists and uh, talk to uh, trade and few dealers and get over 100 stones to develop a system that has more that related to the fancy light, fancy, fancy tense, fancy vivid system that GI developed, fancy dark, fancy deep, but has more graduation. This is two grades, could be fancy light, fancy light plus, fancy has fancy light, fancy, fancy plus, fancy plus plus. Because it is a range, we can separate these three categories. Fancy, fancy, tense in three, fancy vivid maybe in two. And what we did also one more step is not direct correlation, but a lot of people, especially from Australia, many of you listening in Australia now, New Zealand, Hong Kong, using a, a Argyle system. For them, the best color is 1P, what is correspond to vivid, but also 2P correspond to vivid. Sometimes 3P correspond to vivid. Uh, that's why we call it nine and 10 is the best uh, fancy vivid uh, to us. And then goes down to uh, lighter color to 9P being borderline light to fancy light. This is how we correspond on our report. Beside uh, saying color grade, we also put intensity. Is it three? Is it low fancy or, or five? It's a high fancy, close to fancy intense. And this is the idea behind the, 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 the report. And we uh, put both uh, uh, laboratories on the back of the report. And this is how it looks uh, inside of the report. And I'll show you the picture in a second. So uh, the biggest challenge was to correlate these uh, uh, masters to the, this uh, table that we created and correlate also to Mansell groups because we want to have consistency and develop second set. We have two sets, one in uh, Hong Kong, and one in uh, Vancouver. My set is uh, smaller diamonds and smaller lab and the a full set is in Hong Kong. And most of the people from Australia, Hong Kong, and uh, even New York sending people uh, uh, stones to, to Hong Kong and from Canada and Western Coast, uh, California send it to me to do uh, this grading and issue or provenance report, origin of, of, of country report, if you can want to say it, or Argyle report. The one of the few stones uh, that I've, I've seen maybe five, six reds here. This one fancy uh, purple red. Uh, it was between half carat and carat, a very nice uh, stone. And for you, could, whenever a graded diamond, color diamonds, just to tell you that uh, GAA and most laboratories grade the best color in the diamond. In this case, you see flashes of red here. And this is a fancy purple red uh, because it has this, even the a lot of stones has around here is not really red. It's more like a purple or, or purple pink. 
but the best color is fancy red and price skyrocket could be easy million dollar per carat definitely half million if it's a smaller stone i've seen uh, last week one zero twenty eight uh, fancy red it's happening in canada as well and uh, by doing these articles and talking to dealers uh, we realized that uh, on the some websites like a labish is one of the company who sell a lot of color diamonds and this is 168 fancy vivid that was recut from fancy intense 171 to get fancy vivid grade managed to do this uh, it was a tender stone they told us that uh, uh, in, in the last 20 years uh, 34 times increased the price of the pink diamonds and definitely if you have argyle report from argyle or i hope our report also has a value uh, to increase the value uh, otherwise we wouldn't get clients 15 to 25 percent so uh, we have clients in hong kong in new york in australia as i mentioned in north, north america who give us stones who are not laser inscribed as argyle who are not certified because uh, they just started maybe uh, five years ago to do under 10 points before it was uh 15 or 20 points a less inscription so many diamonds on the market are not less inscribed as argyle and difficult to track this is where we come uh, to do this uh testing and uh, this is uh talking about value uh of course uh, when it comes to this color this is a uh, christie's uh, hong kong uh fancy red the two carat this is super rare easy million dollar per carat uh, sold from almost two and a half million Sorry, two and a half million per carat uh, sold for for an for an uh, five million dollars for the stone, and this is uh, quite rare. This one unknown source, uh, but uh, of course uh, we could. Uh, I doubt it's Argal uh, because it's so big, uh, very rare. But you never know. Um, but we think uh, similar to rubies and important Kashmir uh, sapphires or Burmese ruby that goes with origin reports from three four major labs. We, we think there's more interest for uh, origin of diamonds, argyle pinks, uh, for sure. Blue diamonds as well, I have a few requests. We can uh, definitely separate argyle blues uh, from other blues that are type 2B, argyle is type 1. And uh, still, uh, it's important to track where diamonds coming from, from point of, uh, to follow Kimberly, uh, Kimberly process, because Venezuelan diamonds, uh, pinks, are different than Brazilian, and sometimes they, they mix them up or send as a, uh, from Venezuela to Brazil. So consumers just want to know the product origin, where it's coming from. So this is how it looks our report. Uh, we do, if it's a client request, we do we do clarity, we do less inscribe if it's necessary. Uh, this is how to look these uh, nice, nice fancy uh, stones, fancy purplish pink plus plus, almost fancy intense with a strong fluorescence. And this is our prominence uh, type, Western Australia Argyle. And we think uh, there's more interest for this kind of type of service and uh, where diamonds are coming from. Not only if that, we also want to know now for stones that are synthetic, believe it or not, where it's coming from. And you will see in uh, one of the next uh, webinar on 29 uh, sustainable diamonds, uh, how it's possible or not possible. You will see <laughs> discussions round table to track uh, diamonds uh, from source, from mine to the market, uh, either or factory to the market. So uh, to finish and to answer some of your questions, uh, I want to uh, thank people who helped me in the last five, six years to do this research. Uh, first GRS Laboratory, uh, Dr. Peretti for cooperation, uh, Matthias Alessandri who did a lot of spectroscopy while I was in Hong Kong and in Bangkok. Uh, Bill, my partner, uh, who supported me when I'm traveling and doing a lot of editing. Dushan Simic, uh, of course, for a lot of research on uh, pink diamonds as well and other uh, stones and a lot of photography of cross porous filters. Francis Herrera and Nile Shesh, uh, four lovers, nice diamond to help us with the samples in the past. Uh, George uh, and John, George Permilus, IGL Greece and John Chapman on a lot of education, workshops, conferences, making instruments, uh, editing books. And of course, Kim Hughes, an Australia big supporter in um, workshops, uh, I come very regularly to Australia. And, and last workshop in 2018 was on color diamonds as well. And Static diamonds. So, to read more, of course, I send you one article from Guide Magazine in attachment. Uh, just check your email, and uh, it was a two attachments. One of them was Guide Magazine, a 2020 article about same topic. I didn't put it here, uh, but also a book on laboratory grown diamonds. We talk about melee pinks, how to screen, 
and a lot of other books, uh, from small books uh, to articles from magazines to to business uh, business articles, business jewelry to more scientific uh, pink CVD diamonds uh, to cross polar filters book, and of course more academic cartization of pink diamonds in diamond related materials to some conferences that we did. Uh, European Diamond Conference. This is a chance for me to look at some of you more questions. I see more questions and please, uh, uh, this is a chance now to ask questions on the topic of pink diamonds, uh, natural, treated synthetic. Uh, please explain us more how it's possible that pink diamonds show pink fluorescence. Another anonymous, uh, okay. Uh, so this is very important to define what pink fluorescence is. Uh, if it's orange or pink, it's two different colors. Uh, pink, pink fluorescence is, I think, almost impossible unless pure pink fluorescence, unless I see the picture and uh, do my own testing. Uh, usually it's uh, pinkish orange or orange pink. The, this is a sign of treatment. Uh, as I mentioned in my lecture, some are, uh, natural diamonds from Golconda could be weak to medium orange fluorescence, but not pink. So this is my answer on that uh, about pink fluorescence. Uh, so please send me the picture or, or tell me, uh, refer me to some article that is pink, pink fluorescence. Uh, orange fluorescence is caused by envy center, what is the nitrogen vacancy together. And uh, most of the time it's a sign of treatment, as I mentioned, could be very rare in some stones. Golconda. Okay, this is an interesting question uh, from Darlene Wong. She is a appraiser from Vancouver, from Canada. Does not the cut shape of the diamond influence the tone of color perceived by the human eye? Tone. Uh, I guess Darlene, you means uh, light to dark tone. Uh, definitely, uh, shape influence the color. To bring out the best color of a diamond the most color or to make it down more intense. The, the, the goal, when diamond hit the Z masters, it become more color than Z, become fancy light pink, in this case, pink or light yellow. The goal is to be more intense. So cutter will cut the diamond mostly in fancy shapes, either as a radiant or a cut corner tank, the mother of brilliant or oval or, or some other color to, to to more intensify the color. Because round shape definitely tend to water down the color and looks lighter. Uh, that's why some dealers, uh, I teach a lot from dealers from the pricing, they told me same fancy round and fancy, fancy pink, for example, fancy pink round, fancy pink that is uh, other shape, fancy pink round be more valuable because it's more rare to achieve this color fancy in a round than in a for example, uh, square emerald cut or, or, or pure shape or some other color. So definitely uh, tone or lightness or darkness of, of, of the color is influenced by the shape. It's a good question. And um, another question from Mickey. So thank you for your time with this presentation. Will this PowerPoint be available for access anywhere? This is a good question uh, for everybody who, and if your friends miss this uh, lecture, because I know it's a, a very weird time for the European people. Uh, by Monday, it will be on the same website, brancogems.com, under uh, shop under Advanced Diamond Academy. It will be taped, recorded. I just might uh, take out a few uh, minutes that are uh, with some glitches, and you can watch it again. Uh, free lectures will be available. Those that are fee-based, uh, what is coming up in May and June, uh, it will be not on, on YouTube, not on the website. It will be only for those uh, who pay this uh, $39 fee or, or $159 for the five lectures. So this one are still free, four lectures we did for free, and one last one will be also for me and Dushan, uh, no, no charge. Okay, so uh, from John Nicolosi, uh, what type of impact will the closure of Argyle mine have on the price of pink diamonds and when? Huh, interesting uh, question. Uh, so uh, I think uh, dealers talking about this uh, impact for last five years, 
and uh, scaring the other uh, jewelers and uh, privates that price will go up, go up. Uh, definitely price will definitely go up. Price of pink diamonds going up uh, steadily uh, for last 20 years, not only uh, last uh, year. Um, there's still a lot of pink diamonds uh, on the market. Uh, and uh, my personal opinion that uh, will will go up, but not like jump, like a fantastic jump. It's like a steadily going up just because color diamonds uh, generally uh, hold the value much better than colorless diamonds, especially of the rarest color, but it's pink, red, uh, blue, green, uh, and some other colors like orange or some uh, rare colors. So this is uh, uh, on the influence. Yes, uh, from Peter, uh, who missed the beginning. Uh, yes, a question is, what is the true cause of the pink tone to pink diamonds? Is it the many theses of inner plastic tension and impurities, no other trace elements or similar? A good question, and I didn't uh, go into this dive uh, specifically. One reason is it's not solved uh, by me or by other researchers and uh, uh, occasionally, I listen other, of course, uh, researchers, and uh, uh, I listen one from um, uh, Eloise, a uh, French uh, uh, PhD from uh, used to work in Smithsonian, study pink, study blues, and she also works in a French museum. There's some theories, uh, definitely, uh, plastic deformation play a role, and some impurities around these. Uh, deformation but is not uh, solved 100 uh, percent so it's still a puzzle for research what is interesting uh, color diamonds are good compromise uh, stone to study uh, who likes like me gemstones and, and and diamonds but this color diamonds is least so many uh, areas to to still uh, study uh, cause of color and a case of pinks for sure uh, okay one very positive uh, Thank you for inspirational webinar. I'm also very inspired that so many people came because it's I know it's difficult to find time, especially uh, during the day for you in Australia or Hong Kong. Uh, and question, I'm still learning what sort of depths the pink diamonds come from and what makes them type one or two A. I understand that one A has nitrogen atoms and two A has minimal nitrogen. Is, the, is it the vacancies? Okay, uh, good question. Uh, I know from the, I'm a geologist, but I didn't, of course, uh, go into depth or studying like other people. I went to a few Kimberlet conferences. One was even actually in the Victoria, in, in close to me, uh, capital British Columbia. Uh, so uh, type 2A diamonds are low nitrogen diamonds. Low, I mean, even they have maybe few parts per million of carbon, sorry, of nitrogen replacing carbon. It's very, uh, are, it's not exact definition what is type one type it is, but is we just call it low nitrogen diamonds because if we see it in infrared, if uh, nitrogen, this is type one, but uh, even type two A, they have some nitrogen, but it's difficult to detect with that technique. Uh, with some more sensitive technique, we can definitely detect it. So I know that uh, diamonds in Brazil, especially, especially for example, uh, mine in Juina, studied very well by Dr. Felix Kaminsky, a Russian uh, geologist who, who live in uh, Vancouver. They are for very high depth, uh, over 200 uh, uh, kilometers, 250. And it was also a paper in 2018 uh, at the GS Symposium uh, from another uh, interesting uh, a person from Vancouver, British Columbia, uh, Charles, I think Charles Evans, uh, Charles for sure, uh, maybe, no, Evans for sure, maybe not Charles Evans, who did a, a study of type 2B diamonds, they also come from deep, deeper uh, than regular diamonds. Uh, uh, type 1A diamond has more impurities, uh, more nitrogen and other hydrogen, and type 2A are more uh, impurity free. This is what I can tell you about uh, depths of the diamond and types. Uh, question from a dealer from Hong Kong. Uh, thank you for coming from all type of trade. This is our, uh, our customer from Hong Kong. Is every blue stone has gray color in blue argyle? This is a good question. <laughs> uh, I don't know if every, but definitely argyle uh, blue diamonds has grayish tint. Uh, 
if they'll be graded at the end, uh, fancy grayish blue or fancy gray blue or fancy blue gray or bluish gray, depends on the stone. This is a type one A diamond. It's mean they have nitrogen as impurity and they have a very important impurity hydrogen in a bigger amount. And if you read any gemological literature, they call them hydrogen rich diamonds. And basically it's possible to separate Argyle uh, blues or gray blue family from blues that are more typical intense or more like a sapphire looking blue. Not exactly, it's always lighter than sapphire in most cases. We call it type 2B diamonds from, for example, Premier Mine from South Africa or from Brazil, uh, definitely uh, type 2B that has a boronase impurity. Uh, hydrogen uh, and uh, influence color a lot and other defects uh, in uh, Argyle's blues. And uh, we issue a few reports on Argyle uh, blues uh, as origin. Uh, they are interesting from Argyle stones, uh, very often, not very often, sorry, very rare, but they could be also violet. This is one of the source, violet is maybe the rarest color, more rare than blue. Uh, some the same even more rare than pink and red, violet, pure violet or, or, or purple diamonds. Okay, I think uh, we had a lot of questions. Uh, I will keep my box open. I just want to also uh, mention uh, something, uh, what is coming up. It's exactly one hour, so I think I'm good with the time. Uh, but of course, we can always make it a little bit longer if we have more questions. Uh, especially because I would like to really, uh, I'm very, very proud uh, to give you information on the upcoming uh, book that uh, uh, Midushan did one on Liberty Grown Diamonds and uh, 1,100 copies sold and still selling. It's, it's very good starting material for those who want to do more in the diamonds. Uh, in order to go to Advanced Diamond Academy, we recommend that book to read. And then in a few months from now, or hopefully by September, we'll have another book, Diamonds, Natural, Treated and Laboratory Grown. Advanced Education Series number four. It will be number five. Fiducian Simic already have book 100 Diamonds, number six. We already have some plans. We are, have lots of ideas just to find time. In this book, we have a really uh, great uh, professors, Dr. Ann Collins from King's College, now retired. We talk about uh, defects in natural labyrinth diamonds. We are planning to make this article as a special gift for everybody who signed of any fee-based lecture in May and June. Uh, and definitely we have uh, now 10 people signed up for full Advanced Diamond Academy. I'm very happy. We have two from Australia and from Austria, England, South Africa, America, Canada, all four, Iran, all four continents. It's amazing. Uh, so it's a special club, uh, I can say. Hopefully more will sign up. And uh, uh, before that, John Chapman did a lecture on advanced technological equipment. Uh, it's still available to, to listen recorded on, on the website, Advanced Diamond Academy under Branco Gems. And I did uh, uh, one on uh, instruments uh, as a second lecture. Dushan did uh, one last week on uh, HPHT uh, and a APHT uh, treatments. And we have a next one. It's uh, May 7 on, uh, on Victor Vince on uh, treatments of diamonds. He's the person who make the treatments, who makes synthetics. So this is really hands-on experience. And I'm sure he'll have, I, I saw his article, very, very intense and a lot of spectroscopy. Then we'll have a Chinese aesthetic diamonds, uh, Dr. Tejin Lu uh, from China. He wrote article. It, this is a reprint from Journal of Gemology, but he updates us with the current status detection because more and more producers are coming from China. I will also write about other producers in the book. Dr. Zaitse talking about optical spectroscopy. Uh, his, our, uh, his book is for us Bible on, on optical spectroscopy we're using as a reference spectroscopy. And we have a last two lectures in English and French, believe it or not, for those French speaking people. Dr. Thomas Henschweig from Liechtenstein, uh, GG TLF, we talk about uh, spectroscopy and fluorescence imaging. Me and Dushan will finish with the case uh, study samples uh, end of June. This is just, a, uh, now you can see it, how it looks. Uh, we already did uh, this four. April is almost done. Uh, all of them are free and all of them we can download. This is our present for those who want to learn more. And, um, but you need to really get another, at least three lectures to get certificate that I will uh, sign up and to be a little quiz in the end. So we take it this seriously. This academy is not just, listening and drinking uh, <laughs> coffee or, 
alcohol, hope not. Uh, we want you to really focus and, and uh, listen to this very carefully because a lot of information that you cannot find in many places because May 7, uh, it's fee-based. If you want single lecture, $39. If you want a, a set of three, it's only $99 US. Set of five, 159, and you sign up for whole academy, what is a five plus five lectures. And then we have Mikko Astrom, uh, who is reviewer of the book. Uh, he used a lot of advanced instruments and making them. How to use in diamonds, I would strongly recommend this. And I will uh, show you also that uh, um, uh, video, hopefully, uh, after this, uh, with his instrument, EXA. And this is a drone, a more intense spectroscopy uh, for those really who wants to uh, use it, who wants to plan to buy a portable instrument uh, by Zaitsev, professor, still professor of optical spectroscopy in New York. He wrote a book on edge pristine treated diamonds. He he's, uh, uh, we wrote some articles together. He wrote a book with Dushan on edge uh, diamonds and Thomas and me, Dushan at the end. So those who are staying at the end, uh, we also have hopefully our book went to design uh, this weekend. Uh, we, we have a cover, we'll have it in May, a cover design, and you will get 25% discount of whatever price it is. We don't know yet, maybe uh, in the range of eight to hundred dollars to be a 200 pages plus book. So this is uh, our uh, workshops that we did the last big trip in Australia, 2019, in, in Brisbane, Perth, and Melbourne. I have 30 to 40 people in each workshop, and you can recognize in the back John Chapman and Kim Hughes, who were my assisting. We have so many people, we have to, three of us are doing. Then we have a workshop in uh, Cyprus. Uh, so happy attendees from Cyprus, Serbia, America, Dubai, Belgium, Greece, and Russia, and me in the middle. So it's very international, very international uh, crowd. And uh, so uh, we still have some uh, free and good webinars. Next one is next Thursday, uh, uh, about the same time. Sorry, there's a mistake here. It's uh, 5.30. No, sorry, it's 7.30 AM. I, 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 it's correct. It's morning, uh, not evening. So for those who cannot attend, we, we, we can always listen uh, later. Uh, these free webinars, uh, we always post on, on the website. And then we have a, Every week, Thursday or Friday, it's like a regular going to school. Is uh, you see less me, more other people. We have uh, five, six more people talking beside me. But this is a very important webinar on sustainable diamonds. We have people from a geophysist to to gemologists from GK Laboratory to Lab Ground Diamond Council, responsible source network, and producer, uh, director, uh, CEO of Washington Diamonds to talk about sustainable diamonds. It in some ways direction what you're talking, how to track diamonds from the mine to the to the market, to the final consumer. And uh, this is a kind of, uh, when we were young, me and Dushan, like uh, maybe 15 years ago picture, but this is uh, one of the advanced uh, instrument training show that you can really see small defects in diamonds and emeralds, other gemstones. We made a movie. It's uh, one hour, 23 minutes based on 11 webinars. You can download it only $15 from this website uh, under Liberty Grown Diamonds. Uh, shop uh, category uh, and uh, if you order a book or any of the lecture you, you get more for free because i think uh, we want to support you as well uh, this is a book still selling uh, if you didn't get it you get five dollars off you can on, because it's very inexpensive book for what it is 39 dollars uh, plus shipping so end up to be uh, 50 or 65 dollars yeah if you're far far from us and uh, Unfortunately, and I have to inform again the GEM conference will be canceled this summer. I postponed second time because not enough people could travel, speakers and that in this. Uh, it will be hopefully in spring or summer 2021 in same place, Thessaloniki. But I'm not giving up on a GEM trip. So this is still uh, happening and I'm planning to go. So this is some people uh, who came uh, two or three years ago. Maybe recognize some of them from America, from Russia and... Uh, Peter Berg from Luxembourg. Uh, it's still on my website. Uh, I think it's 100 more because we have less people, maybe to be three or four people international, five maybe right now going, but we can visit uh, Emerald Mine, Demantoid, Alexandrite. Who can travel? Uh, let me know if you need Russian visa if you are not uh, from um, Russia, but it's very good uh, uh, thing to do. So we have a few more uh, questions and then uh, I will wrap up with the last I will stop to share and do uh, this movie. So, 
uh, let me see. From Trish from UK. Oh, it's amazing the listeners in UK so so late. We don't see many pink diamonds of good color in UK. Your answer was great. Uh, yes, um, it's similar to Canada. Uh, not so many, but occasionally uh, people are buying for investment or for or for uh, they just like pink diamonds. So I'll stop to share this and uh, let's see if I can one more time uh, uh, show the movie if it allowed me to minimize or not uh, zoom. Uh, so let me see the chat. Uh, thank you very much. Gracias from Mexico. Thank you. I, I'm really happy to share my information as much as I can. And uh, those who are coming, I think they appreciate. And I think it's the best. Uh, thank you for me that uh, you're reacting, uh, you're, you're writing emails, text me, calling me. That's great. Um, so, OK, uh, thank you for staying uh, for, to the end uh, and uh, for your patience and for listening on Call of Diamonds. I hope I had some color to your life and uh, you're uh, OK where you are. And uh, have a nice uh, day if you are in Hong Kong, Australia. And uh, I wish you a uh, happy evening or good evening or night if you are in North America. Uh, Okay, thank you a lot and uh, all the best. Bye.